Now there, there seems to be a very, a very sad type of thinking out there now that the, you've got a wide range of uh, people who are actually for the tax, for raising taxes, and some of those include public health, social services, and public safety advocates. And they are lobbying, lobbying their local representatives to raise taxes. On Tuesday, April 21st, 2009, Rasmussen report, reported that 70% of the voters said that their fears of turning Massachusetts into tax Massachusetts could be a reality, which, as you can tell, it's already headed that direction. Deval Patrick said, I have deep reservations about imposing a higher tax sales tax on people during these difficult economic times, especially at the risk of costing the Commonwealth jobs and at the time, and at a time when we can least afford the trade-off. Shortly after he said that, he started talking about his tax increases. He wants a 20% increase in the sales tax. He wants to raise registry of motor vehicle taxes, I mean fees. He wants to raise taxes on, oh, Snickers bars, Dr. Pepper, Hummers, carbon, uh, business. We've already heard the one about the telecommunication. He wants to increase the taxes on uh, the polls and the exemptions there. Now, the other, the legislators are wonderful truth-telling legislators have estimated that the sales tax hike would bring in an additional $900 million in new revenues and cost the average person $144 extra a year. Now, if you're just barely making ends meet, that's a lot of money to be putting out, uh, especially in an economy where you don't even know whether you're going to have a job tomorrow. Now, here's some really, we've, all, we've, we've heard this one from, our, from President Bush. Here's a, a little look into some really fuzzy math. Uh, let's see, the projections call for the state to retire $1 billion a year over the next five years. So they have to get rid of $1 billion every year for the next five years of debt. But on the other hand, they're borrowing $1.7 billion to $2 billion to pay off whatever they're doing with it all. I have absolutely no idea what it is. So we're trying to get rid of $5 billion over five years, but we're accumulating $8.7 to $10 billion in debt, according to our brilliant legislators. But there is a ray of hope here. There is some people out there who are actually saying, you know what, enough is enough. And one of these people is Jane Folkman, a Medfield resident, who said, I'm not for any more taxes. I've just about had it. I have a better idea. I think we should reduce the amount of representatives. I think that's a pretty good idea. What do you think the representatives would do if we said, or if we got all 6.4 million of us in Massachusetts and said, you know what, we're sick and tired of you. We want you all out. You think they would start listening? Because there goes their, uh, there goes their cash cow. They finally caught on. The Beacon Hill Institute released a study on April 17th suggesting the, incre the increase in the sales tax would cause consumers to spend less money, resulting in 10,182 jobs lost and $41.3 million less in spending and investment by businesses in the, in the Commonwealth. The Beacon Hill Institute also stated that not only will it destroy 10,182 private sector jobs and reduce investment by 41.31 million dollars per year,
but the average person would lose approximately $369 a year. Our legislators said 141, but I think I would take the Beacon Hill Institute's word over because they're, they're associated, I think it's with Suffolk University. They also said that the sales tax increase would, all, would hit low-income families the hardest, and those businesses that are located close to the New Hampshire border, well, I would take it one step further and say uh, anybody who was with probably within an hour's drive of New Hampshire at 6.25% uh, sales tax will probably go to New Hampshire, so it will impact a whole lot more of the Massachusetts economy and the business economy than just what they're re relaying. The Suffolk University study also said 51% of the voters said the state is on the wrong track. Hmm. 59% of uh, those voters also say that, or those surveyed, are confident the state government will not resolve the financial crisis. I don't think they will either because the proof is all right here. They passed the, the House went through the debate for the $27.4 billion state pork budget with dozens of pork barrel amendments totaling millions of dollars despite the crippling economy in Massachusetts. Nearly three dozen House Democrats met behind closed doors, I wonder why, to hammer out budget amendments. Obviously, I guess there's something they don't want us to know. Representative Matt Patrick of Falmouth wrote an amendment that stated he wanted to give $150,000 to the University of Massachusetts to study the winter moth. Now, if that doesn't irritate you, I don't know what will. Uh, I forget what the name of the community but they wanted, they put in an amendment for $100,000 to have you and I pay for a stage. That same community, put in a, that representative put another $100,000 amendment in for video equipment. These people are absolutely clueless. The mayor, uh, Mayor John Barrett of North Adams said, in 26 years as mayor, I have never seen such a lack of leadership in Beacon Hill. When times are tough, we need leadership. Any fool can cut a budget. Yes, any fool can cut a budget, but the method that they're doing it with is not as foolish as you or as the mayor would like to have you think. They're cutting the budget, they cut it in a specific way. They cut it to hurt you. That's the only reason why they cut it the way they do. That's why they cut the police department. That's why they cut the fire department. That's why they cut the teachers. Because not only do they want to hurt you, they want to hurt your children.